Hey, welcome to the channel. It is so nice to see you all. Thank you for joining me. If you did not check out the video from last week, make sure you check that out up above. It is a new week, new video, and today I continue with the remaining tools in the tools panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now the selection tool is the default tool. It's the tool that you will be spending most of your time with. It allows you to not only select and move clips, but it also acts as a trimming tool that allows you to shorten and lengthen clips. And let's say I place, um, I place the selection tool right over the edge of a clip. It automatically turns into a trimming tool. But if I add the modifier key and I go here just just a little bit inside of the clip, it turns into a ripple delete. So I can ripple delete in, and as you can see, you get the heads up display, and I can ripple in. I could also put it right in the center, right in between the two uh, clips, and it turns into a row edit. So I'm able to go right to the edge of where the two clips meet. I can roll the edit right or roll the edit to the left. Now, the other thing that will happen with the command modifier key is that if you put the um, cursor of the selection tool right in the center and you add the modifier key, all of a sudden you will see you are allowed to do an extract. So once I click on the clip, and nothing happens still, but if I drag, you can see that the arrows um, are, they look like jagged teeth, little triangle jagged teeth. And I let go, all of a sudden I got an extract edit to that location. So the selection tool, it's very powerful. And once you get a hold and handle of it, you can do a lot just with the selection tool. The track select forward tool and the track select backwards tool, uh, shortcut A and shortcut shift A respectively. They are used to isolate and select full tracks from the point that you're editing down downstream. So for example, right now I just realized here that I had made a mistake and what I'll do is I'll undo everything. So I now have to move all of these clips here to here. This is my old recording uh, that I don't want anymore because I sound like I'm whispering into your ear. And here is the new recording that I did this morning. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to hit Command X to lift it. I'm going to take uh, all of this here and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to delete this. Now, I don't want to have to zoom back out to move the entire timeline to further downstream. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit uh, uh, select A for my track forward tool. And with full confidence, I can select these clips here. And for demonstration purposes, I will zoom out. And notice that in my entire timeline from that point on has been selected. So like I said, <clears throat> if I'm here, I don't wanna have to zoom out all the time. Again, with full confidence, I can click here and simply just move all that down, move all that down some more, and then go to the beginning here where I want my, uh, what I pasted or what I extracted and hit Command V. And there is my edit where I want it to be, all thanks to the track forward tool. Conversely, if, if I wanted to say, move the things that were, uh, in the front, I could just hit A and then add a uh, modifier A, uh, Shift A. And I'm able to move everything from uh, that point forward. Uh, the other cool thing is that if you hold down Shift while you're inside of the uh, Track Select tool, the Track Select tool will allow you to select a uh, single track. So for example, if these audio clips were not linked, so I'm gonna, uh, select, sorry, I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to hit command L to unlink them. Now notice if I hit a for my track select tool and I hold down shift, I'm able to select just the video or 
just the audio tracks, just by adding the uh, shift modifier. So without the shift modifier and just pressing A, you select everything. And if you hold down shift, it selects single tracks downstream um, this way or that way. So either way, you're able to move things uh, with ease and full confidence that it has selected everything down in the timeline from this point on. So it's very helpful when you're really deep into a very long edit and you need to precisely move something and know that everything is being moved without messing up your audio syncing. And that is the track select tool, track forward, track backwards, and modifiers. Now the rate stretch tool, shortcut R, changes the length of a clip while simultaneously changing the speed to compensate. If you did not have this tool, you would be able to do this uh, command of shortening and lengthening clips, slowing them down and speeding them up by simply just going to uh, V for your selection tool, selecting your clip, right clicking, and going to the speed duration. And here you can precisely uh, change your speed to say 50% uh, and uh, reverse speed or maintain the pitch or ripple edit shifting the tailing clips. I'm gonna undo that. And I'm gonna hit R for the rate stretch tool. And I can go ahead and take the rate stretch tool and bring it in. I've sped it up by 177%. So as you can see, he's coming up much faster. But again, you can simply just go here and just change this yourself by putting it in here. So I say I want to change it by 200% and close the gap here. There it is. Now the razor tool is another tool that you will be using quite often. The shortcut is C for cut. It allows you to cut clips, multiple clips or single clips, audio or video. Now a pro tip, if you hold command K or control K, you will be able to cut right at the playhead. And it's something that I use quite often. I'll be playing a clip and I'll stop where I want it to stop and I'll just hit command K and it'll cut exactly where the playhead is. So I don't have to waste time dragging uh, the razor tool to where I want it to cut. I can just simply play, stop it, command K. Uh, so that's a helpful tip. Hey guys, so I'll interject here right now. Um, if you find the information that you're learning to be useful, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already for more information. Now let's get back to the video. Now the pen tool is a uh, shortcut P and it creates control points or anchor points to allow you to animate um, or automate uh, volume, uh, opacity, different functions in the timeline. And I'll show you exactly how that's done. So if you go here where it says FX, you can right click on there and you can um, add keyframes per for position, for scale, rotation. You can animate all these things. You can animate opacity. So what I have here is opacity. You could also do a uh, time ramping speed. So you can have your clips speed up and speed down and have it change all throughout. So for example, right here, if I wanted to, I would like it to go to black here. So as soon as I finish speaking, let's jump right into it. I could actually put a, a keyframe there, another keyframe there. Now, nothing's going to happen because I haven't made any changes. As soon as I go to this keyframe, I'm actually able to drag it down and extend it out. So the change will be from point A to point B. So I'll, I'll, I'll rewind a bit. Let's jump right into it. So as you saw, it did a nice little um, dip to black from that point to that point. Now, if I want that dip to black to last longer, I simply just extend the time uh, between point A and point B. So I create a keyframe and it's blue, meaning that I have it selected. If I don't have it selected, it's gray. If it's blue, I can simply just delete. And if it's gray, I can just select it with the pencil and delete. Now, another way that I use it as well is for audio. So for example, I am able to ramp up my audio and ramp it down. So the volume 
uh, this uh, uh, little line here, similar to the video, I'm actually able to put it there and I'm able to lower the volume gradually. So for example, at the very end here, so that's the pen tool and how you can use it in the timeline to add anchor points. Now the hand tool is a navigation tool for the timeline, shortcut H, pretty easy to remember that one, but it allows you to drag the timeline and view it from left to right. The zoom tool, another navigation tool, shortcut Z, another easy shortcut to remember is used to magnify your view in the timeline or drag and select the rectangular area around your clip and zoom in to uh, magnify that view. I did not do a uh, introduction or throw to was the text tool and the that tool the shortcut is uh, T. Uh, inside of that tool, if you hold and click, there's two types of text tools that you can do. You can do the regular text tool and you can do a vertical type. The icon is actually going to change is when you bring the cursor over the program window, you can actually click. And what's going to happen is you can, once you type on screen, a new layer is going to uh, pop up, which will be a graphic layer. And when you have that layer selected, you're able to edit that layer in the effects controls. So that's the text tool. And if you wanted to use the vertical tool, you just select the vertical tool. And now the icon, as you can see, is uh, vertical. You have yo-yo, which is vertical, and then you have the regular one. That is the type tool. Well, that concludes the tool panel. I hope you understand them a little better and that they will further your repertoire in uh, your furthering your skills in editing. If you have any questions or you feel like I missed something you want to add to the conversation of the video, make sure you leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you felt this video was helpful in any way, don't be shy. Hit that like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, until next time, y'all, keep shooting.